the entertainment highlight of the week. Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji Nick, Nick Show. Show. Hello. Hello. And now for the Loch Ness Christmas edition, phase one. <laughs> Good morning. Ho, 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 ho. Good afternoon. Ho, 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 ho. Good day! <laughs> Good mince pies! <laughs> Good mince, mince pies! <laughs> oh, damn! Oh, Ness! Oh, Loch Ness! See, it's oh, soon the dear. voice puts you on. I wanted to say good Christmas pudding, but I just repeated mince and that. <laughs> good, good mince. Yeah. I was going to repeat what you said, and that, that as everyone knows, is um, a fail. It's the nature of the, the game. Loch Ness Christmas edition, phase one. Who knows what phase two will be? That'll be coming out next week. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Loch Ness game, which is uh, not a game, and it's not about Loch Ness. It's where life. It's. I'm not Benji. And I'm not Nick, but this is the Benji and Nick Show, your number one podcast for cult television bants. That's right, we talk about all things cult TV, programmes on the past, programmes you might remember, programmes you might want to forget, and some things that you've just completely forgotten about. And we talk about it, riff on it, jam on it, and do all kinds of things. But that's not all, all because we've got, of things. we've got many different uh, many different forms of podcasts. <laughs> what are we doing today, Nicholas? We are... <laughs> I took food. We're I doing boy. Come and See for <laughs> Pyramids of Mars, episode three. You started sounding a bit then like um, one of the one Wasn't of the dudes right, from um, Revenge of the Cybermen, the Vogans. Which one? Oh, Vogans, yes. Episode yes. three. I, yes. I am Tyrone, Chief Counselor of Vogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like You it. will come with me. What? Um, yes, so episode three of Pyramids of Mars. Yeah, got the Very. DVD box here. Very exciting. Yeah. As well as that, we'll also be uh, going over your emails, hearing from you, and talking to Jamie Anderson, son of the late great Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet Guru, uh, Jerry Anderson. Oh. First of all, here's some emails. Shall I read this first uh, monster? Yes, please. Monster of an email. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is called uh, Time is Back and it's about the Doctor. <laughs> this is sent by Cheeky. Kenneth Mann. Right? Uh, it's on the 2nd of uh, December, which was, I think, the day after the podcast, wasn't it? Uh, in the year 1437. Good year. Solid year, that. <laughs> Certainly. Very solid numbers. Mm. Um Yes. Uh, while listening to the entertainment highlight of my week, I was interested by your discussion of time travel drama. I don't think this has ever been done well. Most films and TV taking the path of Doctor Who and treating the past and future as exotic places rather than worrying about causality. I haven't seen the Spanish TV series El Ministerio del Tiempo. I have. But it sounds as though it might be worth a look with similarities to the as yet unfilmed Time Patrol stories of Poole Anderson. Poole Anderson. Hmm. Have you ever heard of him? No, no. No. Might um, just be a bloke that owns a swimming pool. <laughs> Jamie's <laughs> cousin. Uh, have you, you haven't seen El Ministerio del Tiempo? Uh, no, I've not, but it sounds great already. Well, I saw it on, um, it's a Spanish um, time travel series, and I saw it on Netflix. And it had a great sort of feel to it. It's about Ministry of Time and they go back and put things right, but it's not quite certain why they went wrong in the first place. <laughs> and I, there's, a, a, there's something about watching something in a foreign language that always makes it, if you don't speak that foreign language and you're relying on uh, subtitles, it just makes it seem far more intellectual than it actually is. Definitely. So I was watching it, I was, I was reading the subtitles, I thought, hold on, if this was in English, we'd probably just think this was a load of bobbins. But anyway, it was. it's, it's very stylishly done. Uh, one of the most curious uses of time travel in fiction, says Kenneth, that I have seen would be the Time Commando novels by Simon Hawke, a pseudonym, but I understand that the author has changed his name to Hawke in real life. I think he was just trying to confuse future future biographers or 
bibliographers, I, I hasten to add, I mispronounced, misread that word, which take the ingenious line that as this is a work of fiction, its past is famous historical novels. The timeline they are seeking to preserve is therefore the plots of novels, making the coincidences and plot holes of the Three Musketeers, just one example, signs of the successful intervention of future time travellers to make sure the plot works out. I've heard about this, actually. I can't remember a friend it's of mine talking about it. Yeah. The Time Commandos fight successfully to save the plots of Ivanhoe, the Prisoner of Zender, and the Scarlet Pimpernel, among others. Out of print paperback originals uh, keep an eye out in second hand bookshops. Mm. Stephen Moffat did, of course, finally add actual time travel details to Doctor Who. Perhaps this had to wait for stories to be confined to individual episodes. I always had a soft spot for the unloved The Time Monster because of its attempts to play with time, but that was an exception. It does help to have past episodes accessible, so perhaps the invention of domestic recorders explains the change. After all, when I first saw Planet of the Daleks parts 1 to 5 were one week apart, and then the gap between parts 5 and 6 was... 20 years <laughs> of course your son beats you at the Loch Ness game yes my son Ben was uh, uh, playing with us last week because uh, there was an inset day at school so I had to look after him my wife was uh, very rarely it's a very rare occasion she was off somewhere else doing something else so I had to be a parent for a day that's quite shocking uh, this always happens when you teach games to children says Kenneth Pod podcast suggestion discuss the careers of particular actors with reference to their appearances in cult TV. Of course, if you pick Edwin Richfield, you might have to finish watching The Owl Service. <laughs> Regards, Ken Man, the distant present. Do you remember <laughs> um, The Owl Service? I did say yeah. I was going to finish that and I never did. It's, it's one of those ones I just, I'd, if I ever get round to finish it, uh, then you're finishing it, then, you know, brilliant, but at the moment, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. That's the short and the tall of it, Ken. Um, but I, I, I do like the inclusion of a, a massive chainsaw in the in the music, though. Do do do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I can't remember. I thought it was about nice owls with their own little postal service. Um, we've got another podcast um, email here. Subject to disagreement sent on the 2nd of the 12th, 2019 at 12.44 by Mark Crozer. Hello, Benji and Nick. Well, I guess it had to happen eventually. After almost two years of listening to your podcast, the day has arrived where I disagree with you wholeheartedly on one <laughs> particular issue. What could it be, I hear? You know, I hear you ask. Well, uh, it's not that I think Crime Traveller is a work of genius. It's utter rubbish. Nor yeah, do yeah. I think that Danger UXB is a masterpiece. No, uh, no, where I take It's a mantelpiece. It's a mantelpiece. <laughs> it's, it's masking tape. Um, no, where I take issue is on the subject of correct toilet roll placement uh, procedure. <laughs> oh, no, come on. You've got no... You can't be serious, honestly. Any fool knows that the correct way to place a uh, toilet roll is with the loose sheet at the back. Why on uh, earth what? would you want it hanging loose at the front, flapping around <laughs> needlessly where it can be pounced on by your hyperactive cat, for example? That's why I don't <laughs> have a hyperactive cat. Uh, also, it just looks wrong. I'm sorry we disagree no. on this subject, but hopefully we can move past it. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mark in Brooklyn. Well, Mark, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree because I'm never yeah. going to. Um, I'm never going to be able to get over this. Easily get hold of. Yeah, even if it was the other side, a cat could get hold of it. And cats like scratching walls. And if the paper was in front of the wall, then maybe the cat would scratch that. Exactly. Exactly. I suppose the moral well, yeah, of the story but... is to only have it hanging about one sheet down, so that you're not overly you know overly uh, exposed to mass hangings of toilet roll yeah as you say Mark Crozer we will have to agree to disagree on that it could be an inflammatory issue <laughs> right uh, the last email we're reading out today is called uh, the subject is food in capital letters my kind of subject and it's from it is from Adam in Newcastle, Australia, actually. And uh, it was sent, he sent it last Sunday when he was listening to the podcast in uh, in the year 0759. Uh, dear chaps, he says, there's no dear, just chaps. 
chaps did i hear someone unwrap a sweet or cough <laughs> lolly we don't call them cough lollies do we lozenges uh, in the, lozenges in the latest butte episode See, he's obviously from australia he said butte you did yeah it reminded me of the old days of the big finish pod when nick would sometimes eat crisps well all of us would eat crisps not just <laughs> me and people would complain oh they seriously complained I remember releasing an edition of the podcast once where I, I released an edition with the eating and one without the eating, and I just put music in place of all the eating. <laughs> <clears throat> because the Benji and Nick show plays by its own rules, Does. even doing live curry soup cooking, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the disaster curry, uh, perhaps one of you could eat a different snack each ep. Listeners could try to guess what it was. Uh, maybe it could vaguely relate to the classic telly under analysis, e.g., Dairy milk for Chalky. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. That's, that is very that's good. That's very good, Adam. Whimsically yours, Adam, from Newcastle, Australia. That's a brilliant email. Um, I think when it comes yeah. to snacks per episode, we would only do that if all listeners uh, donated at least 10p for us to afford new belts by the end of the year, um, because <laughs> that's the way it goes. Just get huge. I was, in fact, having a strepsil last week yeah which is a for those of you who don't know because brands dif- differ in different territories don't they that is a a um a, a cough lolly as you would say adam a lozenger it was for sore throats really which i've still sort of got it's not fully maturing this sore throat but enough of the revolting i do have um, i do have one food memory when it comes to telly something yeah. that conjures up a television show and that's um <laughs> You can buy Yorkshire tea loaf. I don't know if you can still buy it, but you certainly could buy it in uh, in Tesco or whatever. And I remember that tea I, loaf. Tea loaf, yeah. Is that like a loaf of tea? It's it's a it's really strange. It's kind of like a I suppose it's a bit like a sort of light fruit cake, as it were, with um with tea included. It's lovely. It's very very nice. But I used to always make a, a thing that I would sit every week, watch an episode of. Hetty Wainthrop investigates um, mm. with my tea loaf and a cup of tea and, and so now whenever I think of that programme I always think of tea loaf or vice versa I'll think of yeah it's very see. interesting yeah thank you for your tea loaf anecdote well, I, I thought just think I should um, mildly insane I'm going to write that up it'll only take half an hour <laughs> <laughs> worthwhile right. worth every bit of ink Shall we, shall we watch uh, part three of Pyramids of Mars? It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Loading the DVD. Yeah. This is going to be a lot easier with BritBox. I think I said that last week. Although yeah. I wish BritBox would hurry up and get an app for the television. It's just, well, why do I, I don't want to watch it in my browser. I'm not, well. a, I'm not a savage. <laughs> Well, they're probably waiting to see how well it does before they um, invest in that level of uh, development. Yeah, I thought quite. Do you want to... We'll press it. We'll be out of sync, so let's see how it goes. So we do you three, ready? two, one, and on the one, press. we click the play, yeah? Okay, okay, here we go. Yep. Three, two, one. Started. Now... Yeah, oh, we've started at the same time. Excellent. Brilliant. There's the TARDIS flying. Oh. I pretty much always say there's the TARDIS and there's yeah, the vortex. There's the TARDIS, yes. It looks a bit uh, like the inside okay. of a baked bean tin. Um, <laughs> I had baked beans the other day, actually. First well, time did, and did you look at the tin and say, oh, look, it's And the, there's a uh, the little bit of black at the bottom there, yes. Yeah, the old yeah, classic. The, oh, I like the that. The diamond yeah, logo. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Pyramids of Mars uh, by Stephen <laughs> Harris, part three. Who's not a real person as he Stephen Harris is it oh yes that's right oh return to control is what Sarah's going to say the ring oh this is great I love the design of the uh, mummy mask I love yeah, the other two sort of uh, alcovey bits either side what now look for? return to control oh great of course the funniest thing about the mummies is they've got very slim legs Yes, it is weird, isn't it? Only Liz Sladen can say return to control with such intensity. I was also worried that the doctor was going to raise his... Uh, raise his hat! No. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to raise his arm too far up the uh, mummy's inner thigh and make it giggle. Because he was yeah, holding well, on to its, its shin, wasn't he? Well, you don't want to be doing that. That could be uh, that way really could lead, lead to death. Look at Tom's hair. That's very... Uh 
at the front that's been cut rather finely, hasn't it? It's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. It's been it's fuzzy. Yeah, it's, it's that sort of eighties jobby, isn't it? You know, yeah, but if there. you looked in the last episode, it was just all thick curls, and now it's gone fuzzy. Because that's that was those t- what I was remember of Doc. Uh, t- towards the late the latter stage of his uh, run, was his hair becomes a lot more permy, doesn't it? Uh, he was getting old. You see, but his hair's still curly now. Actually, if it gets a bit long, it gets very curly. Look at him sitting on his chair. He's Ooh. going to the toilet, isn't he? He's on the bog. There's the famous scene, isn't there, where the hand comes round to steady it just before he <laughs> sits or something. I don't know whether it's in this. That's green Ooh. screen, is it? I don't know. No, it's not. It looked like he was what? green screened into the the room there. Who? Sutek. Uh, old Scarman. No, he was on a screen. He was on a screen, but it looked like he wasn't in the scene that he was in the screen, even though he was. Just the videotape. Yeah, I don't think so. No. no, it's complete rubbish on my part. And there is the pyramid, the pyramid spaceship. I'd love to see that um, try to take off. <laughs> it's an Osiran war missile. I love that shot of them both there. It's, it's brilliant, wonderfully, isn't it? wonderfully framed. Screenshot right there. It is. Yeah, yeah. it's the music here. Pyramid and all that. power. It's good. God, what a face, though! What a face! Yeah. Yes. Oh, there, there was his face when he was a little boy. Apparently, do you think it was actually him? No. <laughs> I can. It's just a random Victorian picture. Cytronic particular cylinder. Blimey! Yeah, you're right. Look at that wump for that hair. Like a, like a load of candy floss. It used to regularly go like that, you know, where they would zhuzh him up between episodes. That thing that Tom does putting his hands in his pockets and his shoulders up, that's a that's an, um, a classic Tom Baker pose. It's he funny, isn't it? He does it now. Just relaxed, that's obviously his thing. It's his... Well, it's a kind of tension in it, isn't there? The hands in the pockets and the the shoulders go up. He was doing it in uh, Arthur of the Britons when I watched that episode he did just before he did Doctor Who. And he's there and I don't think he had any pockets there, but he was still doing that. (laughs) That pose. I mean, I always liked it, especially with Tom. When I think of pockets, I think of Tom Baker's Doctor in terms of, you know, in Doctor Who. But I always rather like the idea that he has his hands in his pockets because it feels casual. But also, you know, he's a bit of a sort of vagabond. He's a bit, oh, totally, a bit of an old hippie and kind of just disorganised, I suppose. Really. Now you see this uh, chap here. He is um, doomed, and we know he's doomed because we can tell that he retains some um, affection for his brother, doesn't he? Definitely. And we know that's never going to work. You wouldn't want to be in that room alone with the mummies, though, would you? At all? No. Oh, this is the old cracking bit now. Business. Yeah, this is great. Maybe. Yes, come on. All done in the <laughs> acting and the sound effect. Oh, the noise. <laughs> Who? Really is Doctor Who at its finest, isn't it? Oh, yes. Ah, key. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying what they're saying. Just saying the words. Yes, it's like a... It's not a sing-along, it's a (laughs) talk-along. Of course, course I've just realised as well there's hats back on now. Yes. Yeah, you'd, the, otherwise you'd be able to see that his hair was totally different on Lemonation. <laughs> These are the important observations we're making here, folks. That's it. People listen to the real commentaries to it uh, to get actual useful facts, and we just say, oh, yeah, look at his hair again. It's... <laughs> Ooh. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. That kind of tight lip thing he does, he's, uh, Tom's very fond of that. I mean, the thing is that I, I rather like about this... They're just selling all this with expressions and sound effects, aren't they? Definitely. Well, it's, but, it, but it works. 
but it's the fact that I, you know, I've I've always known that this has existed, and it's just a Doctor Who story to me. But it's the fact that this was on like prime time BBC One television. People would sit down and watch this. People who didn't like Doctor Who would just have it on in the background. Brings me a sort of mild feeling of joy, I suppose. Well, it was doing awfully well at this time, Doctor Who. Arguably, hadn't peaked. I don't think. Oh no, I, I think it certainly had in terms of. Uh viewers i mean i think doctor who by this time had seen off the competition though uh, planet of the apes they put on at the same time as it and kung fu on itv both those were shows bought in by itv and they they all failed in the face of doctor who now, what is this thing is this like a it's a flask isn't it sort of glorified gas canister isn't it it looks like one of those flasks, those water flasks you can buy now that, um, yeah. that people in offices have. Oh, but they don't have those in them. <laughs> well, not all of the offices. I bet some people who hate their job might like to have that inside one of theirs. But... <laughs> so they can get through now. So they have the, Oh, isn't it? Johnny could. And the funny face gets the last laugh. The wonderful effect there. I'm very cross, but I'm restraining it. Sutek's sort of constipated, isn't he? You said about him going to the loo. The trouble is, he hasn't been to the loo for an eternity. Oh, he's, he's still trying, isn't he? Unfortunately, he's just <laughs> that's his, perhaps that's why he's so angry. I need a pool. <laughs> uh, get the toilet paper of Sutek. That. A siren missile is stacked with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the ploy of him to find. He's got very little hands, has not he? Very little hands, very big head. <laughs> Uncomfortable looking throne, isn't it? If I had a throne, I'd want it to at least be padded. Birds, fish, reptiles. I'd like <laughs> to give that as an order in a, a restaurant. Uh, like? the birds, fish, reptiles, please. Is that what it says here? <laughs> birds, fish, uh, reptiles. Or maybe, or have that uh, on your, if you ran a restaurant, have that on the menu. Birds, fish, <laughs> reptiles. <laughs> Sounds like a good, uh, a good autobiography, doesn't it? I don't know. Does it? You what, know. for a, for someone who... Yeah, David or, or Attenborough, the birds, ma- fish, yeah. at, reptiles. That could be the name of your restaurant. Birds, fish, reptiles. Perfect idea. We've, and now we've got lots of dead rabbits. Yeah, the gamekeeper's de- place. But it pongs in there. Cool, yeah. Do you think those are real dead animals? Yes. Oh, thank you. I, 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 I think they are. Well, certainly the, um, certainly the, I would say the skins of them. Come on, it's the BBC. You really think they could make something look that realistic? I don't think so. Well, they might have some from Poldark or something. Um, right, oh, I've just finished this improbable unwinding. And he's going to come a cropper now, isn't he? He is. But first he's going to blow his nose. <laughs> do, 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 do you mind not uh, killing ah! me first? Just, uh, oh, he's got indigestion. No, it's... Gelignite. Sweaty Gelignite. <laughs> that sounds like graffiti on a toilet wall, doesn't it? It's sweaty <laughs> Gelignite is highly unstable. Except Sweaty Gelignite's the nickname for someone who works in the bar. Yeah, nobody particularly likes. Khaki <laughs> Raphael. The thing about Tom is, he, he, if there's one thing he can do, he can really sell explosives and things that might detonate <laughs> Yeah, the total. Yeah, you tell him something's dangerous, and he's right there with he's it. He's like, right. We need to convey this. So, sweaty Jellignite, he he has a, a body <laughs> odor problem, and also he he loses his temper quite a lot, doesn't he? He just blows. He might just blow. That's what, yeah, yeah. He's, that's, they, he, that's what they call him. He's a real Jellignite. he's a real loose cannon. You have to be so careful with him because <laughs> he might just fly off the pan any moment. <laughs> sweaty Jellignite, fly off the pan. That, Whatever. That is, it, that is what um, Sutek pan. would like to do. He would like to fly off the pan in, in <laughs> glorious relief. <laughs> well, uh, and now this is horrid, this. I find this very upsetting. Not that. That's not upsetting, seeing an undressed mummy. <laughs> it's very upsetting for me. Is it? 
Marcus. Marcus. Cut to the chase and murder me. <laughs> Marcus. <gasps> Wouldn't it be funny if that was his only line in the whole story? Marcus. 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 Lawrence. You remember, could I ask, Lawrence, why you are painted such a funny colour? <laughs> <laughs> Do not touch me. They're very different voices. It's him talking like this. And he's talking like this. It's not going to go well, isn't it? The person who talks like this is obviously going to win. The person who talks like that is never going to well, win. Well, that's it. You never get, no, nobody want to fight by talking like that, do they? You know, that's... <laughs> Marcus, I, I will need the lavatory. You. I have suited constipation. <laughs> Out- outrageous makeup. I mean, he's trying. You know, he's trying he to is. help him. He is. I must go to the Asiron missile for the toilet paper. <laughs> See, I am an oboe. His I am a loot. Oh no. Now you've done it. <gasps> Others? Suitcase has detected an alien <laughs> intelligence. Man in a suitcase. <laughs> ah! This is. this is horrible, this. They're painted a funny colour. That's the last you see of him. That's it. Alive. And and you don't need to see him kill him because you, no, you, know, exactly. you know he would have met her pretty sticky end. Yes. He would have been strangled by the arms. <laughs> <laughs> he he crushed his arms to death. Marcus. Strangled not the by elbows. a gigantic shoe. <laughs> What? Now Sarah's definitely regretting wearing this outfit, isn't she? She's yes. thinking, God, I've got to trudge through all this grass. Yeah. So this is, we're building up to the sequence where Sarah suddenly becomes like a crack shot with a Lee Enfield rifle, (laughs) which is, which Liz said that the director, Paddy Russell, was absolutely, you know, adamant that Sarah should do it and not the doctor. Well, you know, we've all got hidden talents. Yeah. Don't know what mine are, they're hidden. Well, no, we'll discover them in next week's podcast. (laughs) I don't know yet. Can't you do it? No, I can row. Can you row? Yeah, I suppose I can row, yeah. Oh, what do you and, mean you suppose so? Well, I've rowed. I mean, oh, okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't win, a, I wouldn't, you know, win the, uh, the Oxford-Cambridge boat races, but I can row. I have murdered my brother and put him in a comfortable-looking position from which he can fall shockingly. There we go. On the back of his trousers that they might split. <laughs> Now, you see, if Ian Marta were there, he would he would gently... <laughs> the doctor just tosses him away Whack him. That's a real alien thing, isn't it? No, but Ian Marta was, you know, he was good at always making sure that Sarah's skirt was in the right position in uh, Ark in Space and stuff, wasn't he? So he'd be there immediately... Tugging it around. He doesn't seem human. Very good. This is pivotal for me for the fourth doctor, this kind of thing where, you know, he's criticised for being cold. But actually what he he just rounds on her and says, you know, I'm thinking of even worse things than this. This is horrible, but I haven't got time to stop everything just yeah. to feel sorry about one death because we're talking about billions, you know. And that's what creates the character, isn't it? And it's that I think, you know, especially with um, with the fourth doctor. He's got so many elements of alien to him, and that lack of compassion. It's not a lack of compassion. It's, uh, I suppose, uh, it's not as important as other things. It's not as important to him as our mere human minds think. Look. Gigantic oh. German stick grenade, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't thought of that, yeah. Um, we're, we're reaching the credibility gap where the idea is that if you just wrap a human up in bandages, they'll look like one of those mummies with the very strange structure. Look. Yes. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yes, you're quite right. 
Yeah, I remember thinking that's ridiculous. Now, the good thing is, though, that Tom is actually in it. <laughs> I bet that was made up in rehearsals. How do I look? Must have been a nasty accident. Don't provoke me. Yeah, because Tom didn't want to be in it and the director forced him to be. Well, yeah, you wouldn't. Tom should because, need to be in that. Well, because she said you walk in a particular way and the audience will be able to tell that it's not you. Quite true, to be fair. Yeah, how are you playing that organ? <laughs> so was that a sound effect or was that music? Come on, what's the answer? Oh, well, it, was, it would have just been music. It would have just been a... Was it, though? Well, it's... Well, it's music in... I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know either. If you want the truth of it, they just... Whoever was playing the organ music earlier, hmm. probably they just cut a little bit of that and just shoved it in there I doubt he would have heard it oh look lunch oh, is ready don't touch that don't touch that ah oh, yes it's a bit overdone it's, uh, do you think it was genuinely making that noise I think it no. probably was <laughs> no I don't think it is no what's I think it probably was so yeah that's definitely Tom walking and he's, de he's probably deliberately walking how he would walk to sort of be like fair enough alright I'll just do it like yeah that's definitely Tom doing that he's even doing his hands thing <laughs> yeah we're just that the way he, yeah yeah No, it's true. How does she just know how to load a gun as well, really? And she, I know what I'm doing. It is, though, isn't it? It's very much like, yeah, done this before. She's not even looking. She's just loading it, looking at him. But she hasn't bolted it. Oh. Well, she hasn't pulled the bolt back again. No. Well, she has now, but we didn't see her do it. And there. You failed to maintain your weapon, son. <laughs> now, mind your, mind your head when you go in. Uh, it's all right. I'll just blow it here. Just just the gelignite. Sweaty gelignite. Now, this is the picture that was used for the uh, basis of the artwork on the Pyramids of Mars book. I, mean, I suppose it is a very but iconic look, isn't it? It's her just holding the gun, yeah, except they make her chin to look too big. Stop! Um, is no, gonna... I'm, I just need to go for a... a, a, a... No, sir, I need the lavatory. No, it's not, it's a no, cylinder. They don't speak, right, so why does he ask him, ask him a question? Is your relay damaged? What's he going to do? Go... Mm. Mm. Oh, he's nodding. Perhaps he writes it down on a bit of paper. Yes. <laughs> Have you got my no have you got my notepad? <laughs> hmm, bit suspicious of that mummy. Is your relay damaged? Well as a matter of fact it is, yes. Be <laughs> giving me a bit of jip, that relay. Oh, no, old blast. The other that other dum dummy mummy <laughs> <laughs> is walking like he's it's too late for him. To get to the loo. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's the other the mummy there that's not even a real right, person. Take two, take two, here we go. And Sutek's not going to stop this at all, is he? That's a nice little... Which will make his constipation even worse. Yes. He's going into spare underpants territory, isn't he? Play him some audio files of running water. <laughs> no! It's cold. I must hold my hands like this. I love that. Yeah, it looks like a blatant early entrance, is it? The doctor. Yeah. You mentioned Susie said, I just saw someone behind you, you <laughs> scum, and turn round. He can contain the explosion, but he can't see the doctor creeping around. The exothermic reaction. 
that from now on is what I'm going to call fire. I'm just going to the kitchen to have an exothermic reaction under a saucepan. (laughs) (laughs) All the the soldiers are there. Right, ready, set, exothermic reaction. (laughs) (laughs) The exothermic reaction squad. (laughs) Oh, he's going. This is where he's going to. uh, Head off to Mars. God, we're nearly finished the episode. I can't believe it's whizzed by. It has it? whizzed by. Well, time flies when you're enjoying yourself. So, what would this episode be about? Twenty-three minutes, would it? It's twenty-one. It's twenty-two. 22 it's going to be twenty-four. No, it's going to be twenty-four and a half by the end. You wouldn't enter that though. You'd be well frightened. It's his only way because he has to go and distract him so that he can't contain the exothermic reaction. Have you not been paying attention? <laughs> I have. Well, well, quite. No, quite, quite. It's not a device. Sure, it's, a it's box my of, packed lunch. It's a box of gelignite. Look at this dummy. It looks like sausage rolls. Mm-hmm. Sutek. Sutek. That's brilliant. So just before that um, dummy mummy is going to get there, he's going to... I'm quite excited. <laughs> is that clarinet or oboe? Clarinet, I think, is deeper. Could be a bass. Yeah. It could be a bass clarinet a bas- or a bassoon. Oh, yeah. You complete another bassoon. Baboon. Ah, that picture got used. Sutek. Sutek. What? <laughs> oh, cr- <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Dan. Stops concentrating, there's a major explosion. Look at that. Very well done. Look at that. Back of the net, liquid exothermic reaction. Which now looks like a nice feature fireplace. <gasps> ah! That's used as a basis for a lot of artwork as well. It certainly is, and trailers and all sorts. Well, there you go. Pyramids That's of the Mars beginning 3. Of the- there you go Arsenal nil uh, they, that thing of having the reaction and the big thing and then a pause and then the theme tune come in I find that quite annoying I think that the theme tune should have peeled in while he was going definitely yeah definitely because it was a bit dry but they often they started doing that it used to drive me up the wall but anyway jolly good just jolly good telly by. fantastic bit of classic Doctor Who that Iconic Ooh. Doctor Who, I think. Ian Schoon's very good with the old uh, effects there. The only trouble with the fire, of course, is that the fire... The exothermic reaction. The ex- Sorry, the exothermic reaction just looks too big. The flames are too big. You can't scale flames, that's, can you? That's one of my pet peeves. It's a real problem. And, it's like know, the same with, with water, isn't it? Yeah. Well, water, you can sort of get round it by having a... Um, if, you would, if you can create enough ripples in, in it. So, like, little but water it, wheels can, can do that. Yes, but, but when it's um, what's the word? When it's cascading, the droplets oh, yeah. are too no chance, too big. No, I mean, no chance, isn't it? No, no chance. chance there. No chance there. Shall we see what Mr. Anderson's doing? Hmm. Manderson. 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 He said he's having a day off, but uh, look at that, relaxing in a nice leather chair. Loose. Hello. How, how are you? Good, yes, welcome to the Benji and Nick show. Thanks for having me along again. <laughs> what is it you're doing on your relaxing day? Uh, well, I've actually spent about three hours on the phone on various business-related matters, so it hasn't really been off. Um, we went to... Uh, Park Brimbach locally oh. and went to the cafe because it was too cold and wet to walk around the park <laughs> <laughs> so it's all going very well so far thanks I've lit the fire a small dog is currently trying to lick my face is that Ernie? no that was Minnie oh okay mm. yeah so and uh, how's your thing going? yeah we've just uh, done a commentary on uh, Pyramids of Mars episode 3 great there you go there's one that I do know but I haven't watched for years so are you are you subscribed to Britbox uh yeah I, I subscribed to the, the, the beta test and I haven't cancelled my subscription yet 
Yeah, me but, too. I, I know Doctor Who's coming in. Was it Boxing Day? Is it arriving? <laughs> That's right. But uh, God, Dad would be horrendously d- disappointed and depressed to know that that on the anniversary of his death they were releasing Doctor Who, which he couldn't stand. Uh, <laughs> Life's they've cool, done it. On, they've it? done it on purpose, haven't they? Just to slight no, I, him. I think that's quite possible. Yes. <laughs> Their entire strategy, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got all the bloody things on DVD anyway, so uh, you know. I know, but it's much uh, easier just to press a button, isn't it? Oh, I like. You know, I quite like the, the thing of picking a, a story and enjoying the artwork on the case and mm. putting the disc in and all that sort of stuff. I quite enjoy that. But do you enjoy that, Benji? No. <laughs> part of a dying breed can't be bothered fair enough who can really I, I mean I wouldn't mind all that except for the fact that I haven't quite got them all mm. and I can never get to use the telly in my household so you know what can I say um, well you want to send your child to work down the mines or something then <laughs> obvious solution I don't know why I didn't think of that <laughs> I don't know why either Benji have you got a question for yeah Jamie? um what product would you buy loads and loads and loads of if it was being discontinued? Oh. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, that is. He's just going to say uh, bog roll, isn't he? No, I was going to say bov roll, weirdly. Oh. Which sounds sound a lot like bog roll. Um, <laughs> but luckily it's very I, dissimilar. I, yeah, never, you never mistake one for the other. Uh, no, I've, I've recently started using bog roll in cooking quite a lot, and it's... Uh, it's marvellous. Full of beefy goodness. Yeah. Well, Dad used to have uh, bovril drinks, you know, like you know, a spoonful of bovril hot water, and I thought it was disgusting, and I remember as a kid going, oh, you're so weird. <laughs> and now I've become weird, it seems. <laughs> um, I did that with uh, Marmite. I have Marmite drinks. Uh, they're very, I mean, they're very, very similar, really, in taste, but not in um, derivation. Oof. Loathe Marmite. So, well, I'm not. I, I, I'm more in actually in the middle. I sometimes I like it. Sometimes I'm like, Ugh, no, I actually don't fancy it. I can't um, stand I love it. it. Butters, I love butterscotch it. Butterscotch Angel Delight. If it was being uh, discontinued, is what I would buy loads of. Butterscotch Angel Delight. I've never A had very any. wonderfully seventies. Oh, lovely. Oof. I feel like I might go and buy some. Can you? Re- will they sell it in Waitrose? Yes. <laughs> I feel like it's the sort of thing that's a bit beneath Waitrose. Yes, they will sell it in Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> I might get some of that this evening. Yeah, you, you probably won't be that wowed by it, but I love it. It's Angel Delight. Mm. I think I've got some. I, 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 That's good, Angel Delight. Yeah, mm. I like a good bit oh, of Angel well, Delight. Keep hold of it. Yeah, well, well, Benji, what would you go out and buy if you thought it was being discontinued? It's being discontinued? Um... Oh, that's, that is a, it is a really tough question, isn't it? Um, probably that um, you can get those like fizzy waters and you can get the fizzy peach water. I think it's from Sainsbury's or Tesco or something. I'll probably buy loads of that. It's just really... No, no strawberry water is, is the daddy. That's the best one. Strawberry water. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, actually... Um, a bit weird. It's not. It's really nice. It's flat, actually. This particular one that I'm thinking of. Oh, the of. strawberry's flat. Okay. Put it in the fridge. Awesome, awesome drink. Right, that's weird. I I would say off the top of my head, it would either have to be Doom Bar. <laughs> oh, I was I was going to say beer, but I I thought that was beneath us. I thought we were going for. I could, of course, I'd say beer. That's what I was thinking as well. Or gin, <laughs> beer and gin. Yeah, of course. Mm. Uh, or. Um, Garner's pickled onions. They are. I've done it. <laughs> I, I, I hardly ever have them these days because even though I don't like them, sorry, even though I like them, they don't like me. I've got it around the wrong way. Um, which Indigestible, is aren't they? Well, no, I can digest them. It's just later is the problem. Ah, uh, reflux. Between us, we have a, a full meal there. Aye. Yeah. Aye. That's true. Pickled onions with beer and gin and butterscotch angel delight. It's a pudding. Yeah. That can be the um, that can be our retreat, the food for the retreat. Yeah, perfect. I look forward to it immensely. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a very smelly old time. The indigestion retreat. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, listen. Uh, thank you for interrupting your sort of day off. Thanks. Pleasure. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Yes, I'm going to go back to cuddling my doggies. Oh, I hope good idea. All of your listeners. Have a lovely week. Oh, isn't he nice? He's what a lovely man. 
It's very relaxed. Yeah. All right then, cheerio. Ta-ra, goodbye. Bye. There he goes, as if he never existed. Bing. <laughs> Gone. Bing. Right, well, there we go. Um, so, what are we going to do next week? It's a tough one, isn't it? It is a tough one. I don't know. I, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head to do. Um, well, should we talk about what we've been watching? Yeah, That's I've got plenty. Doing. I've got plenty of things to say there. Actually, what will you? What will we say? Let's say a few things so that Colin Smith will know what to put on yeah. the cover. Obviously, Public Eye. Um, oh. Yeah, a uh, Man in the High Castle. Been watching oh, a bit right, of okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and um, have I been watching anything else? I've been watching loads of things, but I can't think of them. So those two. I've been watching my... the latest series of The Crown. Oh yes, yes. Um, what else have I been watching? Well, I mentioned Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, didn't I? Yeah. So there you are, there, uh, Colin. There, there's a few to be going along with. See what you can do with those. Mm. Aye, 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 brother. Well, on that uh, bombshell, then I suppose it's time to get nice and uh, yes. close to the microphone here. I just want to remind you to send your emails to podcast at nicholasbriggs dot com. Um, some lovely stuff coming in. Thanks, folks. Thank and you. In the meantime, it for me, it's goodbye. And from me, it's goodbye. Pressing stop now. Kachung.